What was yeah, that song it. by Tupac? Everywhere I go, I see the same hoe. Same hoe, and no matter was it where Tupac I go, or was that Biggie? I see it. Uh, now nah, I was that was uh, that was Pac. Every was other Pac, video, right? no matter where I go, yeah, I'm pretty sure that I was see Pac. The same. I see the same. Hoes. And, and Luda yeah. did one too, talking about uh, hoes. Uh, Ludacris did one. It's called hoes. Yeah, I sent that no. to you. <laughs> but anyway, here we go. Another um, time. Yeah, another time. Or, or, or when is it all about the men? Are men just too weak today? Was my first question, and, and, and I'm gonna say it real quick, and I, you can just tell me what you think about it. Because it seems to me that women are easier today. We're talking about just just having sex, just smashing. It's easier today than it was 20 years ago. I mean, I'm, I'll be it's 52 definitely years. easier today. Yeah, I'll be 52 next week, and I went out just you know just sometimes I go out just I want to see what these guys are talking about, right? I go out I'm like, can you curse on this? I'm like, what the what Lightly. the f bomb? Yeah, yeah, I'm like, what the f bomb <laughs> is all these dudes? What's going on? Is this it's simple almost? So, yeah. uh, and then it, it was like, um, why is it? And these are three things, just real quick in succession. The third one is like, why do these guys refuse? Well, let's to do one at a time. Ground rules. Okay, one at a time. Are, so, are men weaker today? Yes, absolutely. They're 100 percent weaker than what they were 25 years ago. When I was when I was in elementary school, you could use the R word. You could walk up to your friend right in front of the teacher and be like, yo, what's up, R word? Right. And they and nothing would happen. You can't right. even say that today. Okay. They they have gender neutral bathrooms in elementary school, something we never had before. If somebody was acting outside of the conventional, traditional conservative norms, they would be made fun of. You can't do that today. Right. So I think bullying probably is is what kept a lot of culture and society in line back in those days and the removal of bullying from the schoolyard or like schooling and and society and culture trying to equalize a playing field and make everybody equal and make everybody the same they want you all fucking vanilla you're not allowed to be different you're not allowed to have you know like different colors different emotions different whatever like you can't wear certain things anymore right it's like now they want you all to be the same Stand on your fucking dots, take your, you know, take your jabs, follow the rules, you know, like they've been trying to get us to do the last couple of years. So when you do that to men, you know, you wean out the dangerous risk taking testosterone fueled boy that turns into a man. Right. When I was a kid in school, like, you know, the playgrounds freeze here in the wintertime, obviously in Toronto, you'd see a puddle, it would freeze overnight. You'd be like, awesome. And you take a run and you slide across, see how fast you could go. And you, you and your friends would keep doing that and keep doing that to see who would fly, fly the farther. You can't do that in schoolyards today. Teachers come up to you and they say, don't do that. And they put a fucking cone on it. And they say, you're not allowed to do that. Why? Because, because it's too dangerous? Because because one kid wiped out and got a fucking scrape. And then the parent threatened to you know, sue the school. So now there's a fucking cone there because we have to pussify everything. It's the same thing with cars. You know, If you look at cars 20, 30 years ago, the design language, you know, the design architecture... They were very different. Sports cars were prominent. They were very masculine. Now, somebody sent me this meme the other day. I shared it on uh, Twitter, and it was a picture of every single SUV that every car manufacturer makes, all, all the way from Mercedes down to Kia, in white, in the exact same paint scheme. And they all look nearly identical. They're fucking vanilla boxes. They're boring as shit. Fortunately, they still make some supercars. But you have to make money to go and buy those, right? But the vast, like they want you all conforming to the same color, the same style. They want you pussified. So that's the direction that culture and society is taking us, which is why we have softer, weaker men now. We also have a lot of men today that have been raised in single mother households, um, which wasn't as prominent 20, 30 years ago. All, all of my friends in school, you go hang out with them, you go to their parents' house, their parents were there. There was almost no divorce households. There was almost no single mothers raising kids. Um, and I was in a middle class sort of neighborhood, right? But right. today, most kids are raised in a single parent household. And Damn. when they say single parent, what that means is single mom, because women still get 80% of the custody orders or single moms that are having children out of wedlock, being knocked up by Chad or Tyrone, doesn't matter, you know, who it is, but she's just carrying the seed of the alpha, pops them out, and then she goes on a dating site, sometimes pregnant, looking for the next fucking, you know, beta male to take care of her problems that you know she created for herself so guys are weak which is why you see the man of swamp today as big as it is today which is why you see you know these um podcast shows with all the gals sitting at the table which is why you see gals sitting at the table coming in the man of swamp getting the attention and resources of men because there's a lot of weak like these guys are simping there is no other way to put it other than if you're sitting there watching 
one of these gals on YouTube trying to tell you how to be a man, you're simping. Like you look at the comments and they're like, they're clearly simping, Dang. right? So is that a problem? Yeah, but the good news is guys, it's very easy to stand out from that fucking crowd. Yes. You know, Which is like why it's easier to smash, right? That's why it's easier to get women. Seventy percent of the population doesn't have a healthy BMI. They just don't. They're overweight. So the first thing is just don't be fat. Like don't be overweight, and you'll stand out from the vast majority of the crowd. Okay, good. Now that you got that, get some style. Cool. Now that you got that, go to the gym. Uh, pick up a, a fighting sport. You know, become uh, competent in that sense. Cool. Now you got some money. Make more money. Got more money. Become more captivating. Do fun shit. Take fun trips, invite gals and you know, in your world to do so. It's really easy to get women when you're when you've got all the, you know, the you know, the six sixes sort of but, checked but off. Just a couple of them, really. I mean, I, I tell a lot of these guys, I'm like, bro, just be confident, man. Go in there, you know, they're worried about designer clothes. Well, that's like, what bro. the P well, that's what the PUA say, right? Like the PUAs uh, are just like, just make the approach, be, you know, be confident and you'll and you'll get the the date, you'll get the you know, the lay, whatever. And it's like that works for some guys and maybe they do get what they're looking for that one time. But if your success ratio is like, you know, you're making 50 approaches and you're getting one number and maybe like, I don't know, 10 or 20% of the time that turns into a date or maybe a intimacy sort of segment. Is she going to stick around if you have roommates and you play video games and you're a stoner and you're 31 working at Walmart? Excellent Probably point. Right. not. Nah, she done. You have to have the rest. You're absolutely right, bro. And that's, so, okay, and then so that leads to women being easier because it's not much, they're all competing for the same dudes, like you said. Like here in America, what it's like, yeah, 75% of Americans are either overweight or obese. Yeah. You know what I mean? So 25% you're there. The last one was, um, why is it that men refuse to accept these new ground rules? I, I talk to these guys all the time. It's to the point where I'm, I'm sick of talking it, to some of them. Because it's easier to complain than it is to do the work. It's easier to be a little bitch and complain about the card that you've been dealt. And a lot of guys make up reasons why they're upset. They're upset because they don't have hair. They 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 have the wrong skin color. They're not tall enough. There's bone structure. Like there's legitimate. So this is one of the problems with the Mano Swamp is there's legitimate channels that prey on persuadable guys to adopt the loser's quitter's mindset, which is, which is good for guys doing the work. Okay, because it because then there's less competition out there, but they don't need to accept that. You don't need to accept failure. I know lots of short guys that get plenty of ladies. I know lots of guys with many different colored skin that do fine with ladies. Some have more of a struggle depending on where they live and the demographics, but they can still kind of navigate through it. It's like you do the best that you can. You're losing your hair. Shave your fucking head. You can grow a nice beard, grow a nice beard and trim it out. Right. Like have a look. You know, don't be fat, like stay fit. Hi. Right. Look good. It's, it's not that difficult. You know, you just sort of max out, but that's, but that's a large and growing demographic, right? Like that's like, that's a problem. Yeah. I'm going to stay in the fight, brother. I mean, I, I'm, I'm a, I'm going to take up uh, your mantle. I'm, I'm going to start calling it the mental swamp as well. I've been trying to be nice, but being nice isn't working. I'm gonna have to keep it hardcore like that airborne shit behind me. And let, right, last thing before I go, my cousin, you talk about women being harder and stuff like that. My cousin, she's well to do, very beautiful. She was looking for a new car. Mm -hmm. I'm going with her. She, she's hunting for a, a BMW M850 competition. We get into the car and we start it up. And I'm like, no, get out. Get out of this car. You can't have this. You, you want to talk about a machine, bro. Uh, I, I think it would have kept up with you and that McLaren. I think it's uh, 600 and... It came stock 620 horsepower, I think, 615 or something like that. Yeah, that's an M8. In. Yeah, yeah the, the M8. That's a lot of cars. That's not a girl's car. Oh man, she went. She got an M850, but I, I was okay, able so to talk her out of the competition. Okay, so that's a step below the M8, though. Yeah, I, I was able to talk her out of it. <laughs> like, yeah, you can't get just what it's over still here. a lot of car. I mean, it's a lot of car. She got a great deal. I mean, right now the, the bottom fell out, so she was able to get you know her price and everything. But but here it is. This is a woman getting this vehicle. How old is she? Uh, she won't want me to tell her, but she don't know. She age range, she, 30, 35, 30, 40. No, she's just hit her, hit her 40s. What does she do you for a living? Me? Uh, she is, she's very well off. She's so, in telecommunications. She's very yeah. well off. She's doing it. She is definitely into six figures. She's probably making 200 oh, grand plus. Well, right? well, yeah, well north of six figures. Yeah. And, there's lots she, of, there's lots of really successful, you know, 40 year old women. They got degrees in the wall, framed in mahogany. She married, she have kids. Nah, she's doing no. Nah, she's nah, been nah, chasing nah. excellence, then, right? Yes, she's been chasing she's, excellence. She's, she's one of the candidates for Kevin Samuels. I don't understand why I can't get a high value man. 
Well, maybe. And I kind of, I think of Rolo. When I, when I think of Rolo, and it's, it's more she's become the man she wants, possibly one of those kind of things. Well, that's what a lot of women do, right? They, you know, they, they, they set this image for themselves on what attraction is, and then they completely forget that women are beauty objects, and that if there's an older guy that's you know forty five years old and he's got his money sorted out and he has a choice between a boss babe making a quarter million dollars a year driving a BMW eight fifty i nice car you know, by the way, probably has her life together. You know, you said she's beautiful, so I trust you. That's great. But if there's a 28 year old that's hotter and he's got his money sorted out, he's, he's probably going to go for the younger one. Like, why wouldn't yeah. he? Yeah, right? you can't so, compete against your young. I tell that to people. So it's too, a like, tough either. market for the gals, right? It's very difficult. Like, look, as fine as you are, as much as you've done, you can't compete with your twenty-eight-year-old self. Yeah, they'll you're get eighteen-year-old self. You can't do it. Yeah, like a forty-five-year-old woman that's got her shit together will get a fifty-five, sixty-year-old guy. Right, but even those guys are fewer and far between, right? Because as you get older, guys start to fall apart. There's very few. I don't know that many in-shape guys that are like fifty-five, sixty. It's not a lot of us, bro. Even I'm chubby. I'm like skinny fat. I got to keep force myself to get up and do the push ups and go keep, into the gym. Keep keep putting in the reps, man. Like, you know, for you me to, to look like this, dude, I fight two times a week. I have a, a trainer twice a week. I throw in an extra workout during the week. I do a lot of walking. And right? your diet. Diet, too. You know, my diet styled in. You know, my girl's an excellent fucking culinary. Like, she, like she knows how to put shit together and she's in shape, too. So it's like, I don't have to worry about that part of my life. Right. This is not easy to accomplish. Like, trust me, this is almost like a full time job for me to do this shit. <laughs> yeah, the older we get, it gets that way, bro. And uh, therapeutic and, and, testosterone, the peptides, the vitamins, the supplements, all this shit, all that good shit, man. Yo, and I appreciate the talk, man. I, I grew up on the other side of that. You're, I'm, the, I'm like the polar opposite of the way you came up. But here's the thing: it doesn't matter. And I tell these all these dudes, you know, fuck the excuses, man. Y'all got to get out there and get after it, man. You got to get in the trenches. And these dudes are afraid to engage, man. Point blank, period. Last question I want to ask you. Real talk, there are a lot of people coming to the Wano Swap just to just basically to rip these guys off, just like the women on the other side are ripping yeah. them off. You know what I mean? There are guys out there who are really trying to help these dudes out. Um, do you think it's wrong uh, to set a business model in the Wano Swamp right now, just morally speaking? Everybody's I, got something to sell, right? I mean, I... Look, I was already financially successful before I started up YouTube. Uh, my business still runs, you know, the, like the main business that I set up 20 years ago now. It's, it's going to be 20 years old in uh, February of uh, 2023. Congratulations, um, bro. Thanks. Very uncommon feat, um, you know, if you look at the stats. But anyway, um, yeah, I just started doing videos for fun because I wanted to do car videos with entrepreneurs and people were asking me about life problems, uh, you know, like talk about the kind of women to avoid dating started talking about that sort of shit then sort of unpack my own wounds and made them my work on the channel i did that for quite a while i mean now you'll go to youtube and you'll have like a brand new channel the guy's like you know buy my new course on becoming a pickup artist or sign up for my new how to run a harem of 20 bitches you know sort of thing and it's like uh, okay well there's that you know like you know on one side of the scale you got the girls looking for the attention and the money and the super chats and all that and the other side of the scale you got the guys like i'll you know like i'll teach you how to bed you know 1000 women like i did or i'll teach you how to um run a harem of 20 chicks and like the customers that they're that they're selling these courses to they're the same guys that you're dealing with you know they're socially awkward you know they're overweight they don't make a lot of money they're insignificant they don't have a captivating life like you fix all of those things. Like once you, once you understand what women are attracted to, like women, what women really respond to, you don't need to play games. You don't need to memorize lines. You don't need to buy courses. It's like, they're kind of easy. Like, like it's not that difficult Just stay away from the psychopaths, stay away from the ones with the red flags. Like the last dude that, you know, has a right. false grape allegation thing. Like, you know, you see, she's got five red flags. I don't, I don't care. I don't care how big her tits are or how good she looks or whatever it is that's like drawing you in, right? Like there'll be another one. There's another bus that comes along. Like just pass. Let her become somebody other, somebody else's problem. But it's only when you're thirsty and it's only when, you know, you chase women too much. That's why when I was talking earlier, there's two kinds of guys that you can't trust, right? Guys that are always chasing girls to try to get laid. And there's always the other guys that just can't get laid. Because they'll throw right. you under the bus for anything, right? So every single time, when that becomes an obsession and you make it your life, that's when I see it as a problem. And it's like, okay, dude, like, what color is your McLaren? You know, and Andrew Tate's word, sort of thing. Like, why aren't you fucking like chasing other things in life other than just pussy? 
Right. And I, I quote you all the time, man, chase excellence. That's the, the, one of the things I tell these guys, I'm like, look, bro, you know what I mean? You got to chase excellence. Women or that's a byproduct. Women are a byproduct. Of they're that a byproduct of, of you doing the work. And they love that. You, it doesn't matter. They're not they're, the goal. They are the accessory. The and if they're the goal, they're going to run your pockets, bro. Like, again, I came Absolutely. up from the streets, man. Like, I tell these guys when it comes to women, it's like money. All money ain't good money. And you know what I'm talking about. I'm, I don't I can't. I don't know how many times you get hit up by people who want to give you money just so you can talk to them or go on their platform. And I know you say no. All money ain't good money. All women yeah. ain't good women. If, if she, Like you said, if she's hot or whatever, there's another one right around the corner. And I'll leave you with this. For these young guys, I'm a 52-year-old man. I can still get out there. And run my game. I had a woman who woke up the next morning and she said, um, you know, that game you used, that line you used on me was real corny. Mm -hmm. And she and she paused for a moment and she said, as I tell you this in my bed the next morning, I'm like, exactly. You feel for the corny game, baby. Mm -hmm. Now, I'll see you tomorrow. All right, man. <laughs> I'll see you later, okay? Peace. Thanks, bud. I really hope you guys enjoyed that clip. If you want to watch the full length podcast, you can find that over here, that clip's from. If you're newer to the channel, make sure you hit subscribe over here and pin down below in the top comment, you'll find a bunch of useful links to my website, my supplement line books, and a bunch of other stuff. Have an amazing day. Peace out.